let's talk about this as just one last scene because it's a beautiful scene. But, you know, she comes out to everyone's sort of coming postscript coming out to visit to basically say, you can't do this. And he gets like multiple visitors until finally this relationship that's been one of the most lovely parts of his life, this platonic relationship with Marion Davies. She comes with this smile. She comes with a smile. And then they go and sit and have this conversation. So just tell me a little bit about this scene, because in the rewatching of this of this scene and the, the final lines, you know, if if we do make it, don't be disappointed. If you don't make it, please don't be disappointed. It's just incredibly lovely and had uh, a real emotional impact on me in, in the second viewing. The location where we intended to shoot this, which we had every intention of shooting, we were told there was there were adjacent to this location was a set of train tracks. Now, where was this? This was actually in Victorville. Uh, this was in, in this was across the street from in Victorville. Victorville. Yeah, yeah. In the middle of nowhere, and and we're like, okay, this is cool. This will work. And there were some train tracks, and we said, well, how often do the trains run? Twice a day. <laughs> twice a day. Very predictable. Twice a day. Um, uh, once once every eight hours or something. Well, they 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 were right about the twice, but they what they were wrong about was it was like twice every eight minutes. Yeah. See, we 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 pick this, we pick this location. There's this beautiful like little like bog or like frog pond that's right across the right next to the train tracks next to the house and uh the the guest house in victorville we found this place and we thought the trees are beautiful there's this heather that is you know the blows across will 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 augment that with you know goose down or whatever and we'll and we'll we'll shoot it all here this will be fine and we had a train track issue we also had this was a, a, a cattle ranch, so there's an, an inordinate amount of cow shit all over the place that had to be cleaned up. Ironically, this picture that you chose, um, the first one with the chauffeur walking back, is a composite because the people are shot blue screen and then composited into a black and white frame because we had so little time to shoot. When we when we when we finally got out to shoot this location. Um, we realized that we, they weren't going to be able to get a, a, they weren't going to be able to do a take without having to stop for about, you know, two three minutes for a train to pass. So I punted. I just said, "This is too infuriating. I'm not going to do this. Let's shoot plates." And we we got our we sent the cast away. We took the log that we knew that we were going to use. We were going to bring that back to the stage. We supported it so that it would be in exactly the place that we wanted it to. Then we put the actors on it and we figured out all the framing. We shot all the backgrounds in black and white with the monochrome of the setting um, and we retouched them. We took them all in into the DI and got as much sort of range out of them as we could. And then we not projected them, but we played them back on an 18, 18 foot by 30 foot LED screen. This one that you're pointing to now, or that you have up, um, the sun was actually behind the trees, but we added a flare over the top of it to help mix the two things in. But it was kind of uncanny how much um, actual brightness you got out of the LED screen. So this is them in front of an LED screen. The first shot in the sequence, we just fed the LED screen blue, chroma blue, and we shot them sitting on the same log, and then we split them into the plate that we'd shot of the show. it's the only color shot in the movie yeah i was gonna say like chroma blue you can't do that in in mono yeah right well what we it's did the only was, color shot yeah. what we did was we we had this plate and we you know figured out within reason uh, what the approximate focal length was we knew the distance that we would be away we knew what the height of the lens was and we put them on the log and then we just got the camera where it needed to be and then we put a telephoto lens on turn the screen to blue swap the camera body out for your dsmc2 shot it in color turned it over to the um uh, editorial department and because we had the dupe ratio we could we could we could blue screen composite them onto the log that was in evidence and we could line everything up and oh, wow. uh, so we ended up, you know, again, it's horses for horses. We did what we had to do. But this scene was, this scene is strangely ended up being this, um, 
this melange of compositing. And well, that's what I'm saying. Like for an audience member, I was just fully, you know, captivated by the emotional content of the scene to then know later that it's a very technical scene. You know, it's a, it's a, it's a scene that, that needed some technical technology to kind of help help execute it, you know. You needed an inordinate amount of technology in order to make it look really simple. Two people sit on a log and chat. <laughs> I, that, that to me is uh, is is filmmaking. Even it was it's filmmaking back then, which is like tell me a scene that seems super simple and yet it's yeah. not. And that would be, I guess, Lawrence would be an takes Akaba. <laughs> yeah, Eight page. That's right. Yeah, there you go. Um, Three weeks of shooting. Yeah. <laughs>